Now, here's another question. Okay, here's, now, and there's a lot of writing here, so don't get freaked out yet, just, just listen to the question. The question is, here's a reaction. 2N2O5 is going to make 4NO2s plus oxygen. So here's the reaction, and I say, what's the rate law for that? Okay, so what you do is you go, okay, now, I just take the reactants, and I write rate equals K times their concentration, or that, only, that sole concentration, right, of that chemical right there. Rate equals K times the concentration of the N2O5, and the only thing I don't know is the power to which that is taken, but if you give me some information, chem guy, I'm going to find that out. Right. So I give you this information right here, and then you say, hmm, wait a minute. Before, in that example that you did, we had concentration of the reactant or reactants, but then we were given an initial rate. That was called the initial rate method. But you're not given an initial rate of reaction here. You're just given the concentrations that this chemical has left over, given the amount of time that elapses for the reaction to take place. This is concentration in time. This isn't concentration uh, versus the initial rate. How do you do this? Exactly. There's no time in this formula. You need a formula that's going to have time in it. So we can't use something called differentiation now, calculus-wise. We use something called integration. And so, you're going to be given questions only, really, that have solutions for their integrated rate law formulas that are only going to be either zero order for this overall, first or second. That's it. And usually we start with first because that's the one that's going to be the most popular, and then we go to zero, and then we go, uh, go to two, and then we go to zero. Now, now, what am I talking about? Okay, watch this. We need a formula that describes now, not this one, that rate law is for differential. We need one that has time in it. So now take a look at this and don't get freaked out. If this reaction is a first order reaction, it will obey this formula right here, where if you take the concentration of this chemical, and you're only going to be ever given in these types of questions when they want you to calculate through integration, you're really going to be only given one reactant only in a decomposition reaction. That's for high school and first year university types of calculations. The natural log of the concentration. What do you mean the natural log? Well, you know, those curved lines, when you graph this reaction versus time, you know that there's going to be a decrease in the concentration of this chemical that's going to be on a curved line before it comes to an equilibrium point. We never take into account the rate of reverse reaction, only the forward reaction as a decrease in concentration of the reactant, right? So here's the thing. If you want to straighten that line out, you can use logarithms. And if you use a natural logarithm in this case, which actually describes not just curved lines, but kind of lines that loop back on themselves. If you take the natural log of the concentration of this chemical, and it equals negative k, that's the rate constant k, times that time, t, plus the natural log of the initial concentration, if you get, ready, a graph that when you graph this, you get a straight line, you have a reaction that obeys that formula. Now here's what this means, because the hiding in this and this and this formula right here is this relationship. Y equals mx plus the whole thing, b. You know what that is, don't you? That's an equation for a straight line. So this formula takes the curved nature of this decomposition reaction, and if you did graph this, like I was just telling you, you're going to get this, and it turns it into a straight line relationship of decrease in concentration over time. But you've got to take the natural log of the concentration. Now look y equals mx plus b. y, x. What's that? The slope. What's that? The y-intercept. But here's what we're really concerned about. Can you then do this? Think about it. y and x. Make a graph. Make a graph. But that graph, here's your y-axis and here's your x-axis. And what your y-axis is going to be is the natural log of the concentration and your y-axis, uh, sorry, your x-axis is going to be the time. If you take this information here and plug it in where 
you take the natural log of all of these concentrations and make those all the y um, axis numbers and then the corresponding numbers to those y points of y are these points for x for time right here and you graph that and if you get a straight line you've got a first order integrated rate law expression obeyed here and if the reaction's first order you go right back to your rate law and you put a one here now here's the thing how do you graph this well you can use graph paper how else can you graph it you would use your calculator and then right into your TI or your, your scientific calculator, your CATS here, your TI calculator, you can actually go to your uh, stat edit and under L1, that's your x-axis variables, uh, and then under L2 is your y, generally speaking, and you're able to then make a graph out of the natural log of these numbers and their corresponding times in the x-axis. If you get a straight line, then like I said, you've got first order. But what if the line is curved? Then it's not a first order reaction. Then you've got to go to second order. And your second order integrated rate law equation is 1 over the concentration. So you go 1 over this number versus time. Take all of these times still in your L2 here and put 1 over the concentration of every one of these. 1 over this, 1 over this, 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 this. As the y axis variable and if you get a straight line relationship for 1 over versus time here then you have a second order reaction uh, in terms of order right there and if you get a curved line for first and you start with first first and then you don't and if you get a curved line here you get a curved line here and it's not straight then you know it's going to be zero order so you just punch in just to double check Take all these, just the concentration, just the concentration of every one of these versus time. And if it's not this and it's not this, curved, curved, it'll be straight for zero order. That's a good way to do it. Now, your teachers are going to make you memorize these formulas. They are not given on IB exams or AP exams. You need to know those. You need to know and memorize those three right there. How do you do it again? You're given a con question where you have concentration and time you need to memorize the three integrated rate laws and then plug into your calculator the corresponding either natural log, one over the concentration, or just the concentration versus time. Find the straightest line. That's going to give you your answer. Now, we need to solve for K.